Hello, welcome to the first video tutorial. The purpose of these is to supplement the lectures given in class and I'm going to go through different example problems or topics that are providing many of the students struggles. You can request video tutorials on the website if you have a particular problem or example that you would like to see. So the first one that we're going to go through here is a linear programming example similar to the woodworking example that was done in class. We'll go through it a little more slowly to make sure that you understand three topics. One, how to take a word problem and then model it as a linear program, or LP. Then how to graph that problem, given those constraints, and then how to solve the problem once you have the graph. So here I have an example. It's the cat diet problem. So Mur the cat loves food. His owner buys him soft food and treats. And one can of soft food brings him five units of joy, and one treat brings him two units of joy. So Murr has a limited demand for treats, but only wants at most 1.5 cans of soft food. Everyone loves Murr, and therefore we only let him have 120 calories per day, where one can of soft food has 75 calories, and each treat has one calorie. We then say, hey, you can't eat treats all day, even though you want to. Um, you can have at most 20 treats per can of soft food he eats. And is, in this example, I say, if, you had, if he had one can of soft food, he could have 20 treats, 1.5, 30 treats, and so on. We want to know how much we should feed Murr in order to make him the happiest cat. And so with this, we're going to go through it step by step. So first we realize our objective is to make him happy. Therefore, we're going to want to maximize the joy that he has. Um, we also have to identify decision variables. And so our decisions is how much should we feed Mer? And so we can feed him either soft canned food or treats. So with this, we're going to here define decision variables x1 to equal the amount of soft food he can have and we're allowing fractional values because you can partition the can appropriately. And then x2 equals the amount of treats he has. And again, we can break them up treats. And so with this, now we want to come up with our linear program. And so we know we want to make him happy. We need an objective function. So to make him happy, he gets five units of joy from a can of soft food and two units of joy per treat. So with that, we can formulate it as a maximization problem where we want to maximize 5 times the amount of soft food he has plus 2 times the amount of treats he has. So that's our objective function. Then we want to add constraints. Therefore, we have the subject 2. And let's go through this line by line. So Murr has unlimited demand for treats. We don't need to do that. Essentially, we're just saying that x2 is bounded by infinity. Next we say he only wants at most 1.5 cans of soft food per day. So we're limiting, strictly limiting the amount of soft food he can have. So soft food is x1. We're then going to say x1 here is less than or equal to 1.5. So that's our first constraint. Next constraint is the amount of calories he can have. So we say he can have at most 120 calories where a can of soft food is 75 and a treat is one calorie. So to formulate this, we say 75 times x1, the amount of soft food, plus one essentially times x2, the amount of treats he has, has to be less than or equal to 120. So this is saying if he had one can of soft food, he would have 75 calories. If he had one treat, it would add one. So we're limiting this by 120. Our next constraint here is we're saying we're limiting the amount of treats he has by the number of soft food. So here I say one can of soft food means he can have 20 treats. 1.5 cans means he can have 30 treats. So this is a different type of constraint than what we've seen in class. It has a positive slope rather than the negative slope. But what we're saying here essentially is that the number of treats, so x2, x2 has to be less than or equal to 20 times x1. 
because if you had one can of soft food, the most amount of treats you can have is 20 there. And so that's it. Although we now need to include one thing that isn't explicitly stated, non-negativity constraints. And with this, we can't feed them negative food. And so we just say x1 is greater than or equal to 0, and then here x2 is greater than or equal to 0. And so that formulates our entire linear program. So this is an example of a math model. And now we want to find the optimal solution. So we're going to graph this. In class, uh, Professor Sharkey showed different graphs where he had used Excel. I'm going to do it, quote unquote, by hand uh, in case you guys need to do that for an exam. And so we're going to start by just go one down the line. Um, and graph the different constraints. So first one we have x1 is less than or equal to 1.5. So I'm going to do this in PowerPoint, uh, just drawing different lines to try to mimic what you would do on paper. Here we have our soft canned food and our treats. Uh, we say the soft canned food here is limited by 1.5. So that's our first constraint. I'm, now here we're going to add just a text box saying this crosses at 1.5. So that constraint isn't that bad. Let's go to the next one. Here we have 75x1 plus x2 has to be less than or equal to 20. And one thing I want to point out that wasn't explicitly explained in class was the idea of a binding or a tight constraint. And so here we have different inequalities. And when we say a constraint is binding or tight is when the variables filled in make this exactly equal. And so when we graph things, we graph not the inequality, but exactly the equality. And then know everything below or above the line is what is a potential feasible solution. So here I'm graphing, I want to graph 75 x1 plus x2 equal to 120. So to do that, all I, what I do is I ignore one of the variables and I only focus on here. So I say 75 times what equals 120? And the answer to that is 1.6. And so I know on this axis right here, it's going to cross at 1.6. So I'm just going to add an extra text box saying 1.6. Now I need to find out where does it cross the x2 axis, and so I know it crosses at 120. And so if I was going to take this, I know it crosses over here at 120, and then I'm going to draw my line. Clearly this is very much to scale, obviously that's sarcastic. Um, and so now we're going to go on to the next constraint. Uh, we have x2 is less than or equal to 20x1. And so this is in traditional slope intercept form. And so sort of if you think like x equals y. So we're going to say, uh, you can look here, if x1 equaled 1, we would have about 20. If it equaled 1.5, we would have about 30. And so we're going to draw that line here as best as possible. So this actually crosses at zero there. And so if you draw like I do, it's not necessarily to scale. It's just the point of it is to get the idea of the general shape. And so what Professor Sharkey showed in class was the ability to take this objective function, or he called it isoprofit line, and map it and guess different values and move it out accordingly and then find where it intersects uh, an extreme or corner point. In reality, you could be guessing for a really long time. And if you don't trust your drawing slopes, then you aren't necessarily sure if it's hitting the right extreme point that is optimal. So since we have such a small example, what I personally would do would be enumerate the extreme points. So I know it's going to be optimal at either of these four points. I'm going to enumerate them and then just evaluate them at the objective function. So here we know one extreme point is 0, 0. So here I'm just going to write these down is 0, 0. Our next extreme point going over here 
is 1.50. Then we know if we follow this up, we're still at 1.5 but we have to see where this 120, which was the amount of calories constraint, hits at 1.5. So to do that, we're just going to take here, if x1 was 1.5, uh, what then is x2? So 75 times 1.5 is, let me take out handy dandy calculator, 75 times 1.5 is 112.5, which leaves 7.5 treats left to hit 120. So that's our third extreme point, 1.5, 7.5. Last extreme point here, I don't know what either x1 or x2 is. So I have to solve the system of equations where this line equals this line. So I'm gonna go down here and do some side work. And I'm gonna set this equation equal to zero this equation equal to zero, and then those two equal to each other. So essentially what I'm doing is 75x1 plus x2 minus 120 equal to negative 20x1 plus x2. And so with this, we can see that there's x2 on both sides, so I'm just going to delete them, cross them out. Then I'm going to essentially just move the x1's all to the same side and the values to the other side. And solving this means x1 equals approximately here 25.26. So here this is 20, oh wait, this is not right. Uh, x1 equals 1.26, not 25, 1.26. So here this is 1.26. And then if I was going to, again, plug this in and have this equal at equality, so I could do uh, here 20 times 1.26 and see what x2 then would equal. So here's what's 20 times 1.26. I have about 25.2. And again, this is slightly rounded if you're carrying out for more decimal points. Uh, you will get a slightly different solution. And so now I'm just going to take these four points. It's a small enough example. I can just evaluate each of these points in the objective function. So I'm just taking 5 times 0 plus 2 times 0, and that is 0. Then I am taking, again, 5 times 1.5 plus 2 times 0, and that equals 7.5. Then I, again, 5 times 1.5, 2 times 7.5, and that equals 22.5. And then lastly, 5 times 1.26, 2 times 25.2, and I already worked this out, and it is approximately 56.82. You might get 56.84 if you actually carried out all more decimal points. And so now we know we have a maximization problem. I'm looking at which point, extreme point, is the highest. This one clearly is. Therefore, this point 1.26, 25.2 is my optimal solution. One thing to note is if, let's say, for example, this value and this value were equal, you would then know that the line between them, so these two points corresponded to this, this point, and this point, and let's say they evaluated to the same objective function value, then you know that this whole line here is the optimal solution. Therefore, there's multiple optimal solutions along that whole line. We don't have that case, and we find that this point right here is what's optimal. So our next tutorial is going to take another example of walking through it with Excel Solver. Uh, again, you can request videos on the website, and since this is the first one, either giving logistical or any feedback would be great about how helpful or other things you want to see. Thanks!